Um, first thing that I want to do when you are writing up conclusions or you're doing an introduction, what you need to do is focus on the science behind the lab. Because too often what happens, we do a lab and it's like you just do the lab. You don't really think about the science behind it and what's taking place. Okay. And so that's not what I want you to do in here. I want you to think about the science. I want you to write about the science. I want you to research about the science. Okay. And so a couple of the questions that you had on the pre-lab, you had to look up like the law that is the premise behind this lab. And what is that law? law there you go. And so what does the law of conservation of energy say? Go ahead. Energy Good, but it can what? Okay, it can change form and it can be transferred. Okay, so if it, you've, it's been cold outside, you have a cup of hot chocolate, you're holding it, your hands are cold, but you're holding the cup of hot chocolate and now you can't feel that the cup is cold or hot anymore. Why is that? And because the heat and the chocolate transfer to, we had the transfer of energy. And so let's think about that. We want to find the temperature of the, the Bunsen burner flame. So we started with the Bunsen burner flame, which not only has a temp, how hot or how cold it is, but it also has heat energy. So that heat energy, you transfer to what? To the what? Yeah. To the nail. Okay. So the energy from the flame was transferred to the nail. And then from the nail, the energy to the water. Good. Okay. So we had that transfer of energy. Now, the thing is, you would have expected to have a ginormous change in the energy because you're now, right? I mean, we did this morning. We actually had somebody who had a 10 degree difference. That's the Lawrence that I've ever seen. Um, but you probably would have expected more because that now was blazing hot and you did it. And this goes back to, and you might have learned about a little about this in your biology class is the composition of water, okay? And what type of bond water has and how it interacts with other water molecules. So we know that the composition of water is what? H2O, okay? What kind of bond do we have in water? Go ahead. Mm, not within the water molecule, although hydrogen bonding is part of this whole process, okay? It is polar covalent, right? Okay. So if we take, oh, by the way, on page 15, this is where you're going to do your post lab discussion notes. Okay. So <clears throat> page 15, at the top, you need to title this. All right. And you can just say, you know, Bunsen burner flame post lab, post -lab dis discussion. So we have our raw data on page 14. We're going to do our discussion on page 15. All right. Now, this is the science behind, you know, what is taking place in your lab. And I expect to see some of this in your conclusion writing. All right. So we have our water molecule. So it looks like this. Mm -hmm. Oxygen takes on a slightly negative charge. The hydrogens are going to take on a slightly positive charge. All right. And so we call that polar covalent. Covalent means that they are doing what with their electrons? Sharing the electrons. Oxygen has a slightly negative charge because what is it doing with those electrons they're sharing? Electrons have what kind of charge, by the way? Negative. So if oxygen is negative, what is oxygen doing with those electrons? Pulling them closer to it. Okay. 
So it has a stronger attraction for those electrons than hydrogen. So oxygen is pulling those electrons closer to it, giving it a slightly negative charge. Therefore, the hydrogen is slightly positive. All right, now we have three states of matter. We have solids, liquids, and gases. Liquids are in between. So there has to be some kind of force of attraction that are keeping those water molecules close enough so that it's in the liquid form. If the force of attraction is real weak, then they're going to be scattered all over the place and be in the gaseous form. Okay. And that, Miranda, is the hydrogen bonding. Okay. So if we kind of draw in a few more, okay, of these um, water molecules here. All right. And so what we see is we see the attraction between the positive hydrogen negative oxygen all right and these are our hydrogen bonds okay hydrogen bonds are really really strong out of the intermolecular forces strongest of attraction between molecules so here's what happens when you start heating up that water with the nail you need a tremendous amount of energy in order to break those bonds. Once you break those attractions between the water molecules, then that's where you see the temperature rise, okay? The nail just didn't have enough energy to do that, to make that temperature rise. Think about this. We have water in our oceans, our rivers, our streams, and stuff like that. When it's real hot out like it is today, what prevents all of that water from evaporating, going into our atmosphere and leaving us waterless on, our, on the, the surface of the earth? The hydrogen bonds. Okay. Any questions with that at all? So that is part of the science. We have the law of conservation of energy. We have the hydrogen bonding between the water molecules. Now, we can determine how strong or how weak those bonds are between the uh, molecules. And we do that by, with specific heat. So specific heat is the amount of energy that is needed to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. Water has the highest specific heat, the heat of 4.18. That's really high. It seems like a small number, but compared to other substances like um, the iron in the nail, iron is 0.45. So what does that tell you about iron compared to water? It can heat up really fast, okay, and get to a high temperature really fast, as you saw with that Bunsen burner flame, okay? Does that make sense? All right, so here is what you are going to do to finish up this lab. You are going to make a Google Doc. All right, so you will do this on a Google Doc. And these are the components that you're going to document. You work up your hypothesis and number these by question. Like you're not going to put question number, whatever is the hypothesis. I want you to actually use titles. Title hypothesis, your how you uh, wrote on your pre lab down below. Okay. You're also going to recreate your data table. So you'll have your data table and type in the uh, information from your data table. Okay. After that, you do calculations. Now, now your calculate to be questions. Uh, uh, We're not all right. We're going to title them as we see um, on the lab document. All right. And lastly, your so those are the components that you are going to put into your Google document. Got it all. All right. So. Let's take a look at the calculations. So on you have on 
your Chromebook. We're starting with Quest. But here's the thing. I don't want you to say Q6. I want you to say what it is you are actually calculating. And so look at question number six. What does it say that you are going to calculate? Okay, good. So that's what you want to do. Label it. So you have heat absorbed by water. So we're kind of working backwards to get the temperature of the uh, Bunsen burner. Okay, so you have the heat absorbed by water. Next thing, you always want to put the equation that you're using to calculate. And so we're using the specific heat equation or just heat equation, which is Q equals MC. Now, they put in parentheses change in temperature. Here is how we are going to notate that. All right, change in temperature is for delta T. So this is a Greek letter delta. T is for temperature, okay? So delta T stands for change in temperature. And that is gonna be equal to your final temperature. And this is how we, we write notations. So T sub F, F stands for final, minus T sub I, and I is initial. So it's always final minus initial to get your change in anything. If you were using velocity in physics class and you get the change in velocity, it would be your V sub F minus V sub I. Okay, it's always final minus initial. Okay, everybody got that? All right. So we're going to use that. All right. Here's the thing. M is what? Mass. Okay. C is the specific heat constant. Okay. That's what it's called. It's called the specific heat constant. It's a constant. It's very specific for a substance. Every substance has a different specific heat. Okay. So water has a specific heat of what? Go ahead, Charlie. 4.18. All right. Now, later on, you're going to use the specific heat of the nail, the iron. And what is that? 0.45. Good. All right. If we use copper, copper is something else. Aluminum is something else. Everything. We have reference tables that gives us that information. Okay. But in this case, we're calculating the heat absorbed by the water. You got the mass of water, right? Did you get the mass of water? Yes. Yeah, that should be in your data table. You know the specific heat, it's 4.18, it's given to you, all right? And then the change in temperature of the water, did you get that? Yes, okay. So you got the data for that, you subtract the two and you have that, so now, you can calculate the heat absorbed by the water. Oh, where did the water get that heat from? From the nail, right? So the nail transferred its heat to the water. So when the water absorbed the heat, the nail did what? It lost the heat, right? Take a look at number seven. What is question number seven? Good. All right. So in question number seven, you want to find the heat that was lost by the nail. So what would that be equal to? Law of conservation of energy states that exactly the heat absorbed by the water. Good. Guys, this is stuff we learn in the middle of the school year and we're doing it at the beginning. Okay, so I want to start you big at the beginning of the school year. Okay, so next you're going to put heat lost by the nail. All right, and we already determined that the heat lost by the nail is the Q of water. 
okay? So we're gonna call this Q of water, the heat absorbed by the water. So the heat absorbed by the water is the heat that is lost by the nail. Does everybody follow? By law of conservation of energy. Okay? Everybody follow? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. This is great stuff. Take a look at question number eight. What are we going to calculate in question number eight? Can't hear you. Change in nail temperature. Okay, so let's title that change in nail temperature. We're going to use the same equation. All right, Q equals MC delta T. Well, what's delta T? What's delta T stand for? Change in temperature, right? So that is what we are going to solve for, the change in temperature, OK? So I want to rearrange my equation so that I'm, I'm going to solve for delta T. How am I going to do that? Go ahead. Yeah, so I'm going to divide by MC on both sides. That cancels out, so delta T, okay, and I like to like say what the delta T is of. So the delta T of the nail, the change in temperature of the nail is equal to Q over MC. Do you have the mass of the nail? Yeah, it's in your data table, right? Do you have the nail? Yes, it's given to you. Do you have the Q? Yeah. That's number eight, which is also equal to number seven, okay? So you have all the information to find the change in temperature of the nail, okay? I'm switching up number nine, all right? Question number nine, I'm going to change the format of that a little bit, okay? So here's what we're going to do for number nine. We want to find the final temperature... of the nail, and that is going to be equal to the uh, temperature of your flame. Okay, so remember I said the change in temperature is equal to what? What is the equation for the change in temperature? Yeah, so you have T sub F, the final temperature minus the initial temperature, right? Well, what do we want to find? We want to find T sub F, right? That, that's right. So you, in order to find T sub F, we have to take the change in temperature, which you're calculating here, and you have to add the initial temperature and the initial temperature is room temperature. Oh, did you take room temperature? You indirectly did. So the initial temperature of your water, your water was at room temperature. That's going to be your initial temperature. Okay? So your initial temperature of the water is the room temperature, and you're going to use that okay, to add into the change in temperature, that final number you get there will be the temperature of your Bunsen burner flame. Got it? Okay, we're only through the calculations. We haven't gotten to the conclusion yet. Is your head ready to explode? Okay, so if you go to um, characters, on there, you can get it there, okay? Yeah, so yeah, and if you work on that in class, you know, I can always come over and show you, okay? All right, and anything that you do, I'm like a Google certified educator, so um, if you have any questions and doing something, like when you work on the practice packets and you have to label images, okay, and you don't know how to do that, just call me over, I'll show you how to do that, 
Okay. All right. So now we're ready for the conclusion. We got to do all these calculations first. And actually, once you do them, it's really not that bad. Okay. So now we're on to the conclusion. So there's different parts to the conclusion. The first thing, oh, one thing I want to really stress to you guys, you never a hypothesis. Okay, and John, this will be, like I said, posted on YouTube. All right, so you'll be able to get the rest of the lecture. All right, so with a conclusion, we never prove a hypothesis. We're either going to accept or reject hypotheses. Okay, so in your conclusion, I don't want, if I see you say, okay, my hypothesis was proven true. No, it wasn't. I'll you want to accept or reject your hypothesis. And we're going to add in what is called a null hypothesis that before. Okay. So the next generation science standards introduced just have started use have not. I've been using null hypothesis for the last few years. Okay. So conclusion, the first thing that you want to do is you want to state the outcome. Okay, and so the outcome in this case is what? What are you trying to solve? What are you trying to figure out? The temperature of the Bunsen burner, um, you're, well, just plain and simple, the temperature of the Bunsen burner. So you want to say something like this, okay, in this lab or in this experiment, and you always write in third person, no first person, okay? In this experiment, it was found that the temperature of blah, 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 blah was 1,050 degrees. I'm just saying. I don't know. I'm just pulling out a number. Okay, so you want to state the outcome right on the top. What follows is support. Okay, so here's the thing. You know you have claim, evidence, reasoning, right? Our claim is the outcome of the experiment. Now we have to support that claim with the evidence, and the evidence is how you did it in your data, okay? So the second part of this is you're going to tell me how, okay? How did you figure that out? So very simply, you want to... You're not telling me the procedure. You're just going to say, here's where you start using the science. Okay, so by the law of conservation of energy. Okay, heat was transferred from the flame, okay, to the nail the water okay and using the heat equation okay the temperature was calculated at and you restate it Okay, and some students get like into particulars and um, which you really should use your numbers, use your data. Okay, so you want to tell me how you went about doing that. So let me ask you this, is your conclusion going to be just a simple two 
sentences? No, it's the meat. It's always the meat of your lab reports. Okay, when you're doing a lab report like this. Okay, so next part now, you want to either accept or reject the hypothesis. But I mean, you don't want to restate the hypothesis if da 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 da, then da 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 da, because da 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 da. Okay, you just want to put it into simple statement. So you know the hypothesis is accepted because you know the temperature flame was found by law of conservation of energy. Okay, something very simple. You can do that. All right. Last, so accept or reject the hypothesis. Last, you want to accept or reject what is called the null hypothesis. That is N-U-L-L. -L. What the null hypothesis basically says is that if you change a condition, nothing's going to change. It's just going to stay the same. Okay. So in this case, our null hypothesis basically would say that um, the temperature of the flame cannot be determined. by law of conservation of energy and the heat equation. Okay, so basically that is what your, your null hypothesis would be. So are you gonna accept or reject that null hypothesis? Yeah, we're going to reject the null hypothesis because, all right, first you need to state the null hypothesis. And here's a good way of saying that. An alternative hypothesis would be, or is, okay, and we would have that there, okay? And then we would go on to say that it is rejected because the temperature could, in fact, be determined, okay, by way of the law in the heat equation. Okay, so you have all those different components. Um, I do have a rubric for the conclusion, and so that I will get posted on Google Classroom so that you can see um, what that rubric is. Okay, any questions with that? And, and I know you will have questions, so as those questions pop up, Make sure that you text me. Ask how